I want to welcome everyone today. Uh, Design on High Point Market and International Market Centers is happy to have you joining us. Um, we know it's a busy time of year, and we thank you for taking the time to hear what we're talking about. And um, today we have Reimagine, Reopen, and Reengage Visual Merchandising Transformed, which is being presented by Gretchen Cole from Tripart International. If you have any questions on what might be presented, you can email me at kporter at imcenters.com, and um, you will also receive an email afterward with the CEU information. Um, at this time, I'll turn it over to Gretchen. Awesome, Kim. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I feel so blessed uh, to be able to share this message, and you know, IMC has been such an important part of my life uh, as I've been growing my business. And so as we're going through this transition, I am very, very grateful for uh, this platform and the ability to hopefully help independent retailers understand visual display. Uh, today uh, in our webinar, there's a few takeaways that I'm hoping you take home with you. Uh, really, one is about how the consumer has changed uh, due to COVID and due to the environment that we're living in. You know, uh, to identify and create an environment for those consumers when they come in your store that meets their new needs. You know, I'm eager for us at the same time to look at our own businesses and at ourselves and how we can evolve really stronger uh, because of COVID. And the third thing that we're going to do, which is really the most fun, is the visual tactics that we can employ uh, that will really support your brand and your passion uh, is able to be seen by the customer. You know, I've added some holiday inspiration. I, I just did it last night. Um, and we're going to mix those in as we're learning some of the new principles that, that we're broaching. You know, the majority of our presentation is going to be about visual merchandising. Um, I'm hoping to give you just a couple principles about what a good display is. Um, we're going to be looking at focal points and how to create displays really that attract the first glance of your customer. And once we're, we get into those quick glances, the goal is to connect on an emotional level. And uh, we're going to get into a little bit the science of how we see Specifically uh, for this webinar, I focused on windows and store layout. Uh, those are both always really an important conversation, especially uh, given COVID. Um, you know, the consumer has spent an abundance of time, you know, isolated, uh, online shopping, worried about their health and those of their loved ones. And really from this, a whole new consumer has evolved. And that consumer is much more conscientious. Um, they're very thoughtful. In a time of fear, we contract and we kind of withdraw and go into what we know. And everyone is so aware of the turbulence and they're concerned about their physical well-being. And they also have financial concerns. You know, so the consumer is much more selective um, of when they go out, who they go out, why they go out. Um, many of them during this time have really become, you know, advocates, uh, whether it is for education, human rights, uh, health. You know, this, this time of turmoil, they've connected to issues that they might not have connected to previously. You know, in addition to that, we've all developed new hobbies. Uh, some, I, I personally have started to cook and try new recipes. People have gotten into health and fitness. Um, and, and in addition to that, as we've been shopping online, our behavior uh, has changed and it's going to change when we walk into the store as well. And, and to reiterate that a little bit or to explain that a little bit, um, you know, when we shop online, we are very targeted. We go in with an idea, we know what we want, and we start searching for that item. You know, in addition to that, uh, through this, we've been exposed to quite a few new brands and we've developed new connections. We've seen things and connected with uh, stores and people that we, we might not have connected to uh, previously. The other thing that the consumer really is, is they are very, very conscientious of time. 
and they want to spend as little time in your store as possible. They want to be really efficient with their with their timing. Um, the other thing is, um, you, you know, I, I think about the add on sale, you know, I don't know if you've been shopping online, I was looking for some golf shoes, and I have a pretty traditional look. I had typed in those golf shoes and then all of a sudden I was getting this suggested selling to me. And, and I've learned about brands, uh, learned about styles, things that I never ever would have, but that suggestive selling um, is important to me. I've actually look for it now. Um, and so consumers are really targeted in terms of what it is that they're looking for and what they want to buy. So you know, as individuals in society, as we're going all together through this massive shift, you know, human nature is about surviving. And the bottom of Maslow's chart uh, is really about safety. It's about being alive. And, and, and at the top of the chart, it's really about living happily. So when we look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we can see that we've been threatened and we've migrated to the lower pyramid to where we really reestablish our equilibrium and reevaluate what's important. And that's where that shift is coming in consumer behavior because we've withdrawn and now we're getting these new ideas and understanding new perspectives. And it's really important for retailers to understand not only how the consumer has changed, but how we as retailers or business people or visual designers get to change to meet the new consumer ex expectation. You know, so how does it affect visual design? You know, we got to remember the number one thing is we got to attract and our customer, we have to let them know that we're alive. Just like when those selling, uh, when I was looking for my golf shoes, I was being bombarded with um, things to attract me we need to attract the interest of our consumers in the stores. And most importantly, we need to connect. We need to let them know who we are and that we care and that we want to want to connect. Um, you know, they have choices. They've learned an abundance of choices from being on the internet and being withdrawn. And it's really important for us to meet the psychological needs, not not just the physical ramifications of a brick and mortar store, but those psychological needs. You know, consumers don't buy things, they buy experiences. And it's really, they, they wanna move up that, that hierarchy of needs that Maslow has. And so the retailer needs to uh, connect, connect with those uh, experiences. So uh, from a visual perspective, the number one thing that uh, has shifted is that people want to be safe. And so visually, we need to create a safe experience. We need to honor their time. I mean, they want to get in your store, they want to find what they need, and they want to give out, get out. So we, we have to think of visual display as that story, that really quick idea. And, uh, and so connecting with them and telling them uh, that story. You know, uh, it's a huge opportunity um, to rethink your business. Uh, I, I know that I keep stressing this in every single uh, presentation that I've been making. I was interviewed the other day and the sponsor asked me, you know, what's the hope in this, Gretchen? Is, is there hope after, with independent retailers and with all that this is happening? And you know, I, I had to reply that I know it's a difficult time and it's been a huge pause in our lives but wow, I mean, when else in history, not my lifetime, have I ever had an opportunity to reset? You know, there are so many studies that really are suggesting that uh, we, we get to make this shift and businesses are going to succeed if they can put together the message of their store. You know, I, I personally was going full speed uh, down the highway motionless, you know, without thinking uh, prior to COVID. And COVID offered me an opportunity to really think about what I'm doing, uh, both personally and professionally. And, you know, get, get in touch with what's important to you. 
and take this opportunity to really reset so that your message comes out and uh, it can be shared with, uh, with others. You know, I, I wanna really quickly talk about the psychology of how we buy. You know, we are experiencing life in this human form uh, and we experience it through our senses. And our senses, single-handedly, their only purpose is to keep us alive and to bring us happiness. That's what we wanna do. We all want to live uh, long, healthy, happy lives. And it's really amazing uh, when you think about it that our greatest ambition, really when you just get to the human core of people, the ambition is to live a long, healthy, happy life. You know, in this human form, we have senses that feed information to our brain and it lets us know if we feel good or not. You know, the de brain decodes really quickly and uh, it, it's gonna let you know if you like something or if you don't like something. And it really all comes from our experiences. You know, our sight to me, uh, and especially being in the visual industry is by far the most, uh, the most amazing. It's the one sense that is constantly scanning and looking for what will make me happy. Uh, what will keep me safe. You know, people purchase things because they want to have that experience. And, you, you know, they, they, they don't buy a boat. They buy a boat because they want to relax. You know, they buy business attire because they want to have an experience of being professional. People don't buy stuff. You know, they buy things that will make them feel confident, relaxed, and healthy. Many people don't really think about it because, you know, when we touch a hot stove with that sense, we, you know, it's hot and we grab it away, we feel it. Uh, you know, we, we smell and we can feel that. We can, it, it, that sensation hits us. So all of our senses are something that manifests into our body. And when we see, we actually can feel it in our bodies. And, um, you know, you, so, so look at these two pictures. Um, you know, one has the uh, winter wonderland and the other one has a car driving down the road. You know, I live in the great state of Minnesota and uh, I've already seen some of this that's on the left-hand side. Um, for some, they might look at this image and they might get anxiety about having to drive to work or the fear of the winter. Well, some others might look at it and it might remind them of skiing. Maybe they love to ski or um, they're thinking that the holidays are approaching. But if you take your time and you look really slowly at the image on the left and then the image on the right, you can literally feel in your body a sensation depending on your experience. So visual design is really based on that science. It is a science that is based on aesthetics and how the environment, how your visual uh, environment makes you feel. You know, I know that independent retailers have gone uh, decades talking about how things make us feel. And, and this with COVID really helps us grab into, uh, grab into that subject more. Okay, so the science, what is the science of how we see? You know, our brains or our eyes see in big pictures. We really only see um, big stuff and our brain fills in all of the dots. So um, how we see, and I, I kind of wanted you to look, you know, it's, it's dots, it's on a paper, it's a rectangle. We see that, we digest that, that quickly. You know, by putting a little bit of space between those dots, essentially it changed how our eyes moved. When we were on the previous page, your eyes just, boom, looked at that spot or at, at that graphic and it stopped. Now with this graphic, your eyes essentially went from one, two, three, everybody did it. And it was because of the way things are grouped and how they're seen. So, uh, you know, grouping white space, uh, it's probably the number one thing that I preach about, uh, especially for independent retailers, it, it's paramount. Our eyes scan literally tens of a second. We don't hold on to things. We don't want to. It's about our survival. It's about seeing what's next, what's, what's coming. 
So the, the graphic on the top with the words, essentially that, that's hard for us to digest. It's hard for us to see. And the majority of people, when they're looking at stuff, will look at it quickly and then pass on for the next thing to look at. Our eyes want to see rhythm. Our eyes want to float. Our eyes want to be able to stop on things. And so as we're designing your stores or designing your, your uh, displays, we want to make certain that they're seeing not just stuff, not just that bold words, but they're actually stopping and seeing the product. You know, so here's a, a few examples of stuff, stuff. Uh, if your store looks like this, where there isn't white space, there isn't this story, essentially an eye is going to digest that and, and move right past it. And it's interesting, you know, I, I, when I'm working with independent retailers, they have all this stuff and they, and they just want to put it in there. They need to tighten it up. They need to tighten it up. Because in this instance, um, the, the next slide, please. In this instance, um, the, the movement between, uh, between these images, essentially your eye is gonna go one, two, three, versus that previous image in which you see the stuff. Here, you're, here is a story, you know, um, teal is in, they have a lot of sizes. I can tell that by the way they've color blocked. They have hats. You know, your eye is literally gonna go one, two, three. Even on the image on the left, because the product is grouped together, it gives your eye the rhythm and the bounce that it needs. Uh, so uh, let's get to the outside of the store. We know that the first goal is to attract the interest of our customer, and then it's to connect. If we want our eyes to stop, then we need to group things together. We need to put something out there so that it sticks out and enables us to be seen. You know, given COVID, there needs to be an extra uh, push really on the outside of your store. Let them know you're alive, reach out, invite them. You know, I can't tell you how many parking lots I've gone into, uh, even at main retailers. And I am, I, I don't know if they're open or what their hours are or what's happening. You want to make certain that visually you are letting them know that you're alive and well. You know, the image on the left has the door open. Your eye stops there. It's, it is an inviting um, image. And so I encourage you to open the door. It not only is visually helpful, uh, it also circulates that air and people are, are wanting that right now. You know, pull products outside if you can. Uh, make it so that you're really creating a, a beautiful environment. You know, your outside is your canvas. It's single-handedly your invitation. It's not somewhere where you're gonna sell product. It's a place that you want people to glance, to see, to stop, to be interested. So, you know, with the holidays coming, use simple tools to attract your customer and to connect. You know, throw pumpkins outside, create a fall arrangement, uh, you know, flowers, ornaments, lights. I love lights. Uh, it doesn't have to be huge. It just has to be out there so that they know you are alive. You know, these mall retailers are actually bringing the store also outside of their mall. They understand that consumers might be leery. Uh, they might be afraid to go into the store. And so they're trying to engage retailers before or customers before they uh, enter. Entrances are really important and they need to be wide and welcoming. You know, I love the retailer on the right. They clearly have uh, pulled things out so that the customer can see it. And then in addition, they have that very welcoming mannequins at the center that are telling me a quick story. This retailer is really investing in the future of the new customer. You know, uh, notice they have an employee standing out front uh, first of all, their colors are uh, really fresh and clean. Uh, they have signage letting customers know that they're prepared and that they're ready uh, to keep them safe. They also have developed, and, and the image, we weren't able to capture it on our camera, but really the kiosk that is on the left is an extension of that uh, front. 
And they have set that kiosk outside the store so that people can come and pick up um, items that they've done online. They are really connecting uh, the whole shopping experience uh, for customers and letting, and letting customers know that, they, that they're ready. You know, as I mentioned at the beginning, I really want to focus a little bit on Windows. Um, because I think independent retailers uh, think too much about it. They, uh, windows are like advertisements. Uh, if you want to attract, tell a very quick story and entice them to want to come inside. So, you know, it's not about selling everything in your store. It's, it's about giving them a flavor of who you are and what's behind that curtain. The most important principle that I have found uh, with Windows is less is more. You know, don't try to put too much out there. You want your invitation to be really clear and quick, and you want people to be able to see it from across the street or across the mall. So putting a bunch of little things in there isn't going to give it the punch that uh, it needs. Um, I, I think many times, people miss it. You know, it doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be uh, challenging. One of the things I wanted to point out were the decals. You know, decals are a very inexpensive uh, thing to do. I have done decals before in my showroom. You know, it literally, you can get artwork, you can print it on a sheet of paper, you take it, and they're able to translate that. Uh, you don't have to be an artist to be able to do it. But, but it not only will attract, it will really stop the eye. Um, I love this. I love this image. Uh, this is from Nordstrom's. Uh, they have two casually attired mannequins. Uh, casual is very popular. That's the way most people are dressing uh, in their stay at home. And they're giving, and, and it really is about our experience, COVID. I, I want this experience. You know, one is walking, the other is pondering. You know, they're both outside with fresh air and health abounds, and they are both making certain that their voice is heard. You know, when we talk about experience, I want that. I want to do something. I want to vote. I want, I want things that I believe in. I want to be free. And Nordstrom is connecting to us on a very deep level. They're not, they're really not just selling clothes here. They are selling us an experience. They're letting us know who they are and what they what they believe in. And they're meeting the new consumer who's been home alone and worried and inviting them into this new world. You know, while this is a little more complicated uh, from a psychological standpoint and, and maybe even from a visual standpoint, I just want you to notice that their voice that their connection to us is coming through with their words, not with their product. And while you're looking at this, the other thing I want you to notice is the simplicity. There's two mannequins here. There's two mannequins. So if you had just a couple of things with a big word statement, you could be done. You could be done and it can be very, very powerful. Uh, this, this is also another great example I saw this fall. From across the street, you can see just really this beautiful work of art. And, you know, I, I want to have this experience. I want to enjoy the outdoors with my family. And that's really where they're taking you. Um, it is, the family is very stylishly dressed uh, in some of the latest fall fashion clothes. And I wanna have that experience. And in order for me to have that experience, do I have the right attire to be able to enjoy that? You know, again, notice the drama, the impact, the simplicity. There's only three mannequins in there that are, are uh, put together. Now, many of you might be saying, oh my gosh, I could never do this. Look at what they did. They, I took a close-up of the shot because they just took newspaper and put bright watercolors across it. And uh, it could be a kid's project, it could be anything, but they cut that out and they created that focal point for us. It's a great visual display. I threw this one in there because I really wanted to show you the backdrops. Many times, you know, we need that white space. We need our eyes to focus. And when your store, your window has activity happening behind it, sometimes that can really be distracting. 
So the image on the left is, is showing one example of some of the things that you can do to be able to create those backdrops. You know, backdrops are really important. This image, I just took this fall. And what's interesting about it is it has beautiful window space. They've got this big window. And, and what you can't really see is to the right of the image on the right, there's a big post. And then there is another post that is kind of uh, to the left of the one on the red. That color blocking is really what attracts your eye. Otherwise, it would just, it, I, I don't care what you put in there, it is going to get lost because those posts are there. So in Windows, you definitely want to have that impact. And uh, you can do that with backdrops if you can't do it with the product that you carry. You know, there's a lot going on the image on the left. As a matter of fact, I, I almost missed it and I'm so glad that I saw it because it's not an experience I wanna have. It, it isn't something that attracts me. When you think about all of our dots uh, on the page, the one on the left is about a bunch of dots. There isn't anything that sticks out from across the mall or honestly, even when you're right next to it, that tells your eye where to go. You know, notice the block of paper that they have in the back there. Um, they're trying to use that to keep you, which is a, a great idea, but it is extremely busy and it's actually distracting to, uh, to the window itself. Look at the backpacks on the right-hand side of that. You know, you've got three different backpacks, you've got uh, a skateboard. No one is going to come to that window and shop backpacks. Matter of fact, you know, that you got one teenager, their shoes are off, one's looking away. Um, one I think says, go away. It is, it, it's like a bad teenage experience. That's not an experience that I wanna have. What I would have loved to seen from this retailer is have that backdrop be a big bright red uh, backdrop. Maybe even have it come onto the floor in front of the skateboarder. Uh, get rid of the girl uh, on the left-hand side have the, have the yellow, the yellow against that red is going to be a great contrast. That red would really pull you in. The yellow and those blues would all tie you together. Take one backpack and, you know, literally put it on the floor of, uh, of that red uh, paper that you have. And essentially that would be a quick story. That would be, you know, a stylish young skateboarder out after school playing. It's a story that we can relate with. You know, when you've got a bunch of little things, I threw in the one on the right because it's really well done. And what makes this display work is the coordination of color. They have a bunch of little things on there, but the impact of color um, pulls you into that display. Okay, we got the one on the left. Again, we've, uh, we've got an image of of, Hall of Halloween coming up and it's pretty busy. You know, uh, it, to me, it, it's not, it, it seems thrown together. It reminds me of my Halloweens where I'm running out and panicking. It gives me a little bit of an anxiety. You know, really by removing a lot of those accessories and lightening it up and focusing on the experience of those children trick-or-treating, it would have been a much more powerful draw and easier to see. There's not enough white space in that for your eye to rest and really get the story. The one on the right is fabulous. I mean, look at all that white space. They've got this huge window and they, again, three mannequins, three mannequins. It's not all filled up with stuff. They don't have pumpkins and lanterns all over the place. It is clearly giving by the color that we have ideas for fall. And, and gives you a glimpse of, hmm, they, they've got stuff in there that I might need to look at as I broach the fall season. I also love the uh, things hanging from the top. We'll maybe touch on that in a little bit. Again, the image on the left, it has a family experiencing the great outdoors. Uh, this, this image I took uh, over at, All Na at Old Navy, you know, it's a quick story. Everyone is out picking apples. I can see my family together outside um, you know, do I have the denim that I need to, to do those activities? It is an experience that I want. And so it's clearly defined in the white space and, uh, and, and a really good visual display. 
you know, the one on the right, not, not so much. There are way too many things happening in that window. And, uh, you know, they've got little things in there. They've got hats, they got sale signs. They have a couple of mannequins over to the right. There isn't anything that's distinguishing that window you can see through. Uh, to me, it looks like a, a messy closet. If you are a patron of that store, you're gonna go into that store anyway. But really the window is to attract new customers. That's, that's really the purpose. And so this, this isn't going to tell a really clear story. Uh, visually, it, it, it doesn't. Again, the one on the left, um, it's, a, it's actually a very balanced display, but they're selling a lot of little stuff from across the mall that you wouldn't even know what they were selling. And so it's really important to be very conscientious. Go across the mall, go across the street, you know, look at your uh, displays from 10, 15 feet away and, and understand how it's being perceived from a distance. Uh, the one on the right, uh, this is a holiday display that uh, I took. And again, it's missing the mark. They've got a lot of space there, but that is not where I see my family gathering around at Christmas time. A matter of fact, I, it's hard for me to envision. So they missed the mark here. There's a lot that they could have done by taking things out and making things bigger. So one of the things you might be saying to me is, you know, hey, Gretchen, I sell little things. I don't sell big things. How, how do I do that? The most important thing for your window displays, especially if you're selling little things, is to get some fixtures in there. Get get a visual that's drawing people in. You know, the image on the right is selling jewelry and it's very, very simple. Uh, you can see the two cases and you see the butterflies. I think they're butterflies floating around out there. And those are as delicate as the jewelry. It gives you movement. It gives you, it's interesting, visually interesting for your eye to go after that. Uh, the one in the middle, you know, men's shirts. I, I thought this was really a creative, uh, a really creative display. You know, repetition, seeing things in multiples, putting together unexpected, uh, that's really important in the windows. One of the things, and I don't know if you can really see it, but up at the top of that shirt one is a grate. And that grate um, enables you to hang everything off of it. I've hung them in my showrooms. I've hung chandeliers from them. I, a matter of fact, I hung a bed frame from it one time. That great enables you to really be creative. With a little fishing line, you can create uh, some really awesome displays. Uh, on the, on the right-hand side, you have a children's store. That graphic, uh, incredible. That smile, we need it. And really, look at, they've got three little outfits down there, but they've blocked out the back and they have, they've touched my heart. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about what's next. Okay, so I, I wanted, uh, with the holidays, you know, the, the image on the right, what experience is that? You know, I don't know about you, but I saw that and immediately I was thinking, oh my gosh, my uh, holiday Christmas card, what is everybody going to wear? So, so it is reminding me about the festivities that are coming and how, how we might dress. I love the one on the right hand side too you know, cold weather wear, you know, they've got you outside, they've got you cold. I love the wood there. And, and they have this, uh, this person standing out there nice and warm. The lights also, uh, we're not going to get into lighting, but both of these are really good examples of how light uh, can draw our eyes and help us really see things uh, better. Again, the image on the left, I don't know about you. I mean, they've got gifts on the floor, they have, you know, Santa Clauses, they have pillows. It, it is not a place where, I don't know, you know, would your family gather there? This retailer would have done much better had they put a big chair uh, in there, a uh, couple of the pillows on it. They could have maybe had a couple unwrapped gifts and the, the snowmen sitting into those gifts, but really creating an environment with the product that they have that enables me to see myself in that, in that experience. The image on the right, I think one of the things I really wanna emphasize is propping. You know, when you're talking about your window, you need uh, to attract them. 
And so really they're selling outdoor clothing here. They're an outdoor um, retailer. And, and the space that they've dedicated to what they're selling is very small. Really, it's that experience. It's about me camping. It's about me being outside. It's about be, me being with my friends. Um, and the bear, I would rather not experience that, but it's a great touch and fun to see. Okay, now with this image, we are able to experience Christmas. I don't know. I, I Neither of them are really my style, but I can see myself relaxing here with my family opening gifts and me with a glass of wine. It is that experience. I know from the outside, I can see this far away. I know from the outside that even though I don't necessarily see my style, I bet that store has what I need. And I'm gonna go inside because I wanna capture that same experience that they've given me on the outside of their store. So, you know, creating uh, that holiday, creating that experience, being unique. The one thing I wanna emphasize is it doesn't take a lot of money. Uh, you know, creating trees out of product. I've got a couple examples a little bit later, but creating, Creating products. If you notice the one on the right hand side, those are made out of egg cartons. And it really is just that visual uh, that is going to entice the eye and have you curious about what that store has inside. Um, you know, uh, mailing, gift giving. Uh, the, the one on the left just so reminds me of, oh my gosh, I, I need to get on it. I need to get my gifts mailed. I need to be thinking about it. Repetition, the repetition of the mailboxes and of us all sharing. Uh, it's, it's a great visual, it's a great visual. The one on the right, they've got the mailbox in there too, but they've got a lot of little stuff in there. From a distance, it's even hard to see the mailbox. So while they were on task, they actually overdid it. It would have been much more powerful if the mailbox would have been by itself with just a few things spilling out. Okay, uh, we're gonna talk really quickly about uh, store layout, just because I think that in all of the areas of uh, COVID, that is by far the most, uh, it, it has affected stores because essentially retail space, there's usually four and a half uh, feet about between fixtures that was required before, before even by law to get wheelchairs through and strollers through and let people easily maneuver. And now with the six feet, uh, six, six and a half feet, you really have to open up that floor space. And it's really counter to what many independent retailers have experienced. Uh, you know, we're always cramming stuff in there, trying to get it in there. But the reality is, is now that we know how our minds see, how our brains interpret data, you're gonna see that by tightening up those displays and by giving a little white space between those displays, People are actually going to see more and they're going to sell more. So, um, you know, walk through your store, figure out where it's tight. And the most important thing, you, you want that visual in front of you right when you get into the front of the store. We migrate to our right. Uh, scientists have a bunch of uh, hypotheses as to why that's true. Some believe that it's because most of us are right-handed and we protect that side of our body, but, we're, but most people are gonna go to the right. They're gonna walk the perimeter of the store. So you wanna make certain that that area is open and clean. And most importantly, you want to be able to have visual places where their eyes are gonna bounce. Everybody's eyes go the same way and they're gonna hit those same uh, focal points throughout your store. I can't get much into signs, uh, but Signs are really important. People don't want to go in and touch product. They want to know that you're being safe. Uh, that communication, whether it's on a webinar or on a sign, we're doing so much more of that. People are looking for decals on the floors. So make certain that you look at your graphics uh, really carefully. I have a couple blogs uh, out on it. I encourage you to really look at not only the visual graphics behind it, but uh, the verbiage and how you can make those signs more powerful. So, you know, when you enter a store, a lot of the retailers are moving their product way back. So you get this feeling of air. People don't want to feel congested. They don't want to feel uh, trapped into your store. So give them breathing room, literally give them breathing room so that uh, they can see. 
On, on the left, you can see right away, they've got the casual clothing out, which is selling more natural colors um, are in. I see some comfy sweaters. I get that story right away. The one on the right, uh, you can't see it quite as well. The entrance was uh, notably tighter at this retailer. When you walk in, there's flannels there, winter wear. It's an, it's an outdoor uh, retailer. But what I want you to notice is 45 degrees. That's where we're gonna focus. Look at the exercise pants in the upper right-hand corner. When you walk into that store, you see the first thing, and that is the second thing that everybody sees when they walk in that store. And I have to say, when I first walked in, one of the first things that I thought about was, wow, I didn't realize they had exercise pants. And so it is extremely strategic in terms of how our eyes look. Everybody would go there if they had walked into that store. So, you know, the retailer on the left, tight, congested, disorganized. Our brains are more sensitive to that right now. We want things to be clear, open, and easy for us to shop. The one on the right, you know, the children's uh, gap, they do a great job. You know, you walk in, you've got the picture of the girl on the left and the boy on the right. And you know what? All the girl stuff is on the right and all the boy stuff is on the left. And they clearly have the visual points so that I can see what stories that they're telling and connect with it. Um, here, here's a layout um, that was taken. And essentially this layout, we've got a lot of room here, right? They've got a lot of space. And, um, and the, the issue with this particular retailer is they can use much more powerful uh, focal points in it. They've got this big area in the middle that's being underutilized and there is nothing on the sides that is telling me any type of story. So on the next image here, um, Olivia actually was drawing that to create that middle section so that uh, it's more powerful. So it's telling a strong story. So from outside of that store, people walk in and they get that message. Most importantly, we know that they're gonna to turn to their right. So having focal points and having areas in that boutique style so that um, all of that product is telling a story and, and capturing me as we go through it. You know, this is a side angle of that very same store. And I, again, this is not an experience that I wanna have. It, it looks like a messy closet. You know, if I am a customer and I know their, st their style, uh, what I've purchased, I, I might go in there and dig. But ultimately, I have to search for the experience. I have to look. I have to really work hard to get that experience. It would have been much healthier for the store to create, you know, a mannequin, uh, face outs that really put the outfits together so that I can connect with it. You know, now if you're a store that has like a little of everything, like maybe this store did, uh, just had a bunch of stuff and it was randomly searched, I encourage you to group them together by color. You know, color has emotional components that people gravitate towards and they would arrange by color and those punches uh, would really connect with the customer. Color blocking helps our eyes. You know, it helps us bounce quickly from one item to the other. You do that on the left there. You'll hit the green and then the light green. Um, the items on the left use color uh, very well. If I'm looking for a green sweater and it resonates me, I might go in, into there and take a peek. The display on the right, however, with the face outs is really important because I can see the colors just like I can on the one on the left. It's still attracted by those color blocks, but the face out has me in the sweater. The face out has me experiencing the sweater and it really produces a very different feeling chemically in your body. You know, grouping, uh, clearly uh, getting organized for back to school, you know, have you thought about it? You know, the backpacks aren't cramped, they're not fighting, they're not desperate. They are clearly organized for my brain to be excited about getting ready for back to school. Um, and I've seen backpacks, I, I, I wish I would have kept one of them, but disorganized and they're tossed around. It's not about calming my brain. You have to work much harder then to think, oh yeah, I'd love to buy a backpack. The one on the right has a few things right and wrong with that display, but I wanted to point out how the face outs tell a quick story. 
you know, you may not have come in for Halloween attire, but all of a sudden you're wondering if your child or grandchild has something to wear so that they can experience Halloween. Uh, the image on the left looks like my daughter's closet. Uh, it's disorganized, there's shoes on the floor. Nothing is really telling me to have an experience or sharing with me an experience that I would love for my daughter to have. On the contrary, the image on the right has me active. Uh, it's outdoors and with my husband. You know, that's an experience I want to have and I want to look good doing it. So the simple placement of the mannequins, two mannequins, the majority of it is selling stuff. Uh, encourages me to want to look for my size. Grouping product, giving it space, um, immediately helps our brains. We know that. We know that those little pictures help us brain. The, the one on the left is essentially taking jewelry that's very small, and those were very large uh, fixtures. But the uniqueness of those fixtures draws your attention. You know, I love the way it's grouped on the right hand are in the center there with the uh, shoes. You know, our eyes again like to see in rhythm. It likes to move. We don't like to stop. We want to gather the story. So the way it is fixtured keeps our eyes moving together. And so it's just grouping it. You know, do you need a shovel? Snow's coming. Oh my goodness. It's putting it together that helps us see that. Uh, Z Gallery, uh, go into their store. They, they try to pull you right into the experience. They are setting tables and giving you um, everything you need that's on that table right behind it. Uh, even in the one on the left I had taken at Macy's, uh, amidst all the chaos is all of a sudden this restful place where you are seeing it on your table. Um, one of my favorite places to go for a visual display is William Sonoma. Um, you know, I ran in there literally for this webinar, and when I walked in, I forgot. I forgot why I was there, and I forgot because I was greeted by Thanksgiving. I mean, I, I had to laugh immediately. My brain was going, "Where am I spending Thanksgiving? Do I need anything for Thanksgiving?" You know, you've got the aroma, you've got the smell. Right to the right hand side of the turkey uh, setup there was this baking. And you, I, I, I remember thinking, wow, maybe I can make something with my granddaughter. You know, am I spending Thanksgiving with my granddaughter? It was just this whole emotional trigger of, of the holidays for me. Uh, you know, here, even here, they, they make a, you know, a spatula be interesting and has you thinking, do I need one? And they do it because of the way it's organized. It's organized so well that it puts you into this mode, literally wanting to search for which tool you might be missing. The one on the right was probably my favorite uh, because I would never ever have gone into the store to look for it. And I was just cruising by it and I thought, oh my goodness, what is this? Essentially it was apple cider and cranberry juice and uh, it was the spices and literally the alcohol you could do. It was just like a great hostess gift. Really very, very good ver uh, visual merchandising. Um, you know, I sat on a round table yesterday and there was a very prominent retailer and she was saying due to COVID, she's not putting trees in her store. And I'm certain that she will uh, not put trees in her store as well. Uh, and I'm sure she'll do it well. But, you know, try to incorporate the feeling. I mean, look at some of these displays. Matter of fact, the one in the middle with the ties, I was thinking, wow, you know, you could put this into your middle of, of the store and have it really being a selling tool. Even the shoe one on the right-hand side, you know, those are things that maybe your customers can even shop from. And you want to give them that experience, attract them and, and let them know that you've thought it out. Uh, you know, we talked about boutique style. One of the things when we shop online, we're shopping for categories. You know, in, in 2019, we had our stores full to capture us, to keep us in the store, to keep us thinking. Now, because of the internet, because of COVID, we're really targeted. So put all your candles and all of your um, similar items into the, into the same area so that your customer can shop. And you know, that doesn't mean that it's not, not pretty. It doesn't mean that it's not attractive. You can arrange them so that eyes see them. You're thinking right away, do I have candles for the parties that I'm having? Notice the wood uh, that, is, uh, that is in, in these images. 
you know, it's it's going to get cold outside, and and that's what that's conveying. I'm sure that uh, come the spring, those wood pieces are going to be disappearing. But again, the way the product is grouped on the right hand side, it enables you from a distance without touching to be able to clearly see your eye is going to bounce to all of those different items. All right, this is my last slide, and uh, I, I there's so much out there that I wanted to share and tell. But the one thing as you're getting ready for the holidays and you are thinking, oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm gonna get this all in, use the ceiling, use that space, hang things down. We talked about it earlier, but by creating light hanging from the ceilings or just anything beautiful from the ceiling, it creates an environment. It, it kind of is like an umbrella that showers it and very, very interesting to the eye because it's looking up, you're looking up. And so I encourage you to uh, incorporate lights and uh, things into your, into your store. You know, uh, the pandemic has been really challenging. Uh, it's been challenging us in so many ways. And I just firmly believe that it's a great opportunity for, uh, for us to visually translate what's in our heart, what's in our heart. And I'm hoping that today you learned a few things, maybe a couple tactics, uh, a couple things that uh, you might be able to put together. Um, in closing, I wanna say, I encourage you to reach out uh, to TriPAR. Our, our email address, and I don't know if it's on the next one, or is uh, tripar.com. We've got a blog, uh, we've got information for you. Uh, really, my job is to give you the tools and the ideas to live authentically and have your store be better than it ever was before. So excited. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Gretchen. I want to uh, just thank you for the inspiration and the detailed um, visuals and information that you gave everyone today. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Gretchen and her information is there on the screen. And if you'd like more information about High Point Market, um, products, uh, showrooms that might be open to shop and um, just other details for CEU credits, please visit our website at imchighpointmarket.com. Uh, again, we thank you and please stay safe.